My guest is a Deputy Assistant Secretary for the United States Government and an expert in nuclear issues. That certainly should ring the bell in your head because we in the Republic of Ghana are seeking to develop a nuclear power. A nuclear plant is in the offing. This selection of a nuclear technology and the country to develop that. It's actually the stage we are today. We sure are interested in her activities on the continent, I understand. Alicia Duncan, yes. you're welcome. Thank you. The first question, and it's about your activities on the continent. What has brought you to Africa? Absolutely. Well, Africa is a priority for the U.S. government, and therefore I've made a stop already in Kenya to talk to those colleagues about their path to nuclear deployment, how they might be a critical role uh, on the continent, and then coming to Ghana to work with our colleagues at the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, where we have recently announced a clean energy training center to support not only infrastructure development in Ghana, but also on the continent. And then finally, I'll be heading on to Uganda, where I'll be speaking at the African Business Summit. I need to zoom into Ghana because I had something interesting. Now, the part to do with the clean energy center, when is that going to be built? So the Clean Energy Training Center fortunately has uh, virtual and physical components. And so we've already started. We are offering a nuclear mm -hmm. curriculum virtually to the entire continent free of charge. Mm -hmm. Those classes are taught every other Thursday under the auspices of the training center. We will then find a suitable location in partnership with our colleagues at the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission and then look to have some in-person events to include workshops, mentoring workshops and in-person courses. I know why clean energy is important, but why is Ghana the choice for this conversation? Ghana has a history of leadership on the continent, and I think that it is important as we look to partner with African countries that we have a country that has established abilities in that area. They also have developed very nicely in the IAEA milestones approach um, as they look to deploy nuclear here and make decisions around technology. And therefore, Ghana is a natural choice to support West Africa and coordinate with East Africa and work with the entire continent. Nuclear energy, it's what you mentioned, the conversation, the understanding. I know why Ghana is currently very, very interested in nuclear energy, but what will be the impact of such an institution on um, not just the academics and the experts in Ghana, but the ordinary people of this country. Absolutely. Well, one thing I think that this would create more education and training opportunities for the local people. They could uh, aspire in skilled labor areas. They could also get additional support from our institutions in the United States to include academic uh, research, industrial, as well as partnerships with the government. So that really expands the opportunities for coordination, collaboration, and cooperation in those areas. And then for the everyday people there, that would mean jobs. Mm -hmm. um, as we deploy and develop nuclear programs in partnership with con con countries on the continent, that means jobs. That means people have more opportunities to be able to have a career, to support their families, and therefore um, support a narrative of generational legacy and wealth and contribution to the people that live here. The other question that's really relevant to me is, I mean, you've been meeting relevant people in the Republic of Ghana, including yes. ministers and all of that. What's been the conversation about? Well, the conversation is about the relationship between the U.S. and Ghana um, and the impact and contribution that we would be expected to have on the continent. This is not something that is a given. Mm -hmm. This is something that Ghana is still considering. Who to choose as their strategic partner? So the conversation has been around, will the U.S. really be a consistent and long-term strategic partner? The answer mm -hmm. is absolutely, and that is our intention. Um, and we want to be able to support this in a way that brings safe, clean energy source to Ghana and others on the continent, as well as be able to help shore up energy security, which is a very important conversation at this time, as well as able to be able to support some of the non 
electric applications mm -hmm. um, to include food irradiation, um, water desalination, uh, dist district heating. So there's a score of um, supports that happen when you consider nuclear and you consider a partnership with a long term. Do you get the impression that the US ROD has been chosen and its technology the one we are considering? Absolutely not. As I just mentioned, um, this is not something we take for granted and we mm -hmm. know the consideration in question is around who will be the best long-term strategic partner. Is U.S. the best long-term strategic partner? I would say both in the strategic partnership as well as in the technology. Mm -hmm. We have the best technology and we are able to support a hundred year long relationship or more because that's what you're talking about when you're talking about a nuclear energy partner. At the core of this country is the, I don't know where that has developed, but the perhaps misconception or thinking that nuclear energy comes with some risk, risk, risk to do with the possible explosion, risk to do with attracting enemies you don't want. And for a sub-Saharan African country that has always had difficulties with these security and safety issues, are these legitimate issues? Well, let's, let's talk about the safety of nuclear first. Um, you'll recall that there was a nuclear accident at Fukushima. Mm -hmm. A lot of modifications to the technology were made in response to that, thereby making passive safety features, meaning Fukushima would not happen again. Because if there were any type of event, whether natural or not, the system would shut itself down. So that is the beauty of advanced reactor mm -hmm. technology. You'd not lead a lot of people to be on site. It would be able to shut itself down, literally walk away safe. Um, and then as it relates to other, uh, maybe, I'll call them, you call them enemies, or what did you say? Yes, did you yeah. Use that word? The, the, yeah. Enemies as it relates to nuclear. I think most of the countries um, with nuclear power programs around the globe um, recognize the importance of nuclear. So I don't know whether you're talking about enemies that come from other countries that have nuclear or not, mm -hmm. but um, in terms of that, I think the cyber security piece of this okay. is very important, and that is, as well as the physical safety. Um, so those would be two key areas that we would be working under in the training center if the U.S. was chosen as the strategic partner. The conversation in the Republic of Ghana is that nuclear energy is going to augment our energy sources and make us inch up, um, if not, so not eliminate completely, but reduce the, the energy difficulties that we consistently have over is it a decade or two or so consistently to do with deficits. Um, is this true? Does it reflect the facts or we are just being hoodwinked? No, I absolutely think nuclear will play a key part in any country's energy mix. The United States, for example, 20% of our energy source comes from nuclear. Mm -hmm. So it can play a key source. And the one thing about small modular reactor technology is that it can go into a lot of places of um, topology that are different. So in remote areas on the coast, um, there are many different ways that it can support um, sort of the geography of Ghana as well as its ability to be transported in ways that make it much easier um, to solve this energy solution. The other question that I need to ask you, which is important <laughs> currently, is beyond safety issues, beyond the choice and the alternatives that it's in, is it still a cheaper option? Well, that depends on which um, what you're looking at, so small versus large. Mm -hmm. um, I think the economics on small continue to be studied, so I wouldn't make any commentary around yeah. there because that's, you know, that technology is still under development and that's going to vary by country. So I think that the, the research is still being done there on the economics of nuclear mm -hmm. in terms of what different types of technology there are. The, the final question about, you said, does it, training center and a training that's currently still ongoing what the people who have misconceptions about what they call it are not really the experts and the professors mm -hmm. the people are the ordinary people sometimes completely misinformed Absolutely. how do we get them to appreciate nuclear for what it is and not necessarily the misconceptions around it well i think one of the key things we have to be focused on is how we communicate around nuclear. Mm -hmm. um, we 
we cannot speak about nuclear in technical terms of two people who don't have nuclear engineering mm -hmm. degrees. And, and I myself am one of those people, so I can say that. Um, I think it's also important that we communicate the benefits of nuclear, how they impact people's everyday life. Um, just being able to turn a light switch on and that light source be constant all day. Um, to be able to receive um, a medical diagnosis and prognosis and treatment from nuclear applications, to be able to clean water, to be able to irradiate germs from food. There's even been um, work being done with the uh, mosquitoes to be able to mm -hmm. support those uh, issues and, and disease carrying uh, ramifications. So I think that when we start to communicate nuclear about in a way that shows people how it can increase their quality of life, then I think we're doing the right thing in messaging nuclear's benefits. They don't want to tell us, but I know you can tell us. Um, uh, you believe in transparency, right? I believe in transparency. Brilliant. So why are we going to build our nuclear plant? They say it's along the coast, but they've never been pointing to us where it's going to be. Oh, well, that wouldn't be a decision that the United States <laughs> would advise on. That would be, They've shared it with you. That would be a decision that would be done with site selection criteria. Mm -hmm. would be um, the decision of, of the Ghanaian government. And I know that there are many, many brilliant people here that will contribute to that decision. That's not even something that uh, we would advise on from the United States government because that's a decision that the, that you all will make here. Mm. Now, recently we were told about um, food and the nuclear impact and some of the. In fact, I was told, and even though I've not stopped consuming it, the banana parts. Mm -hmm. The the the. Do you hear some of these misconceptions? That banana has radiation. Yes, and it absolutely does. It, it does, yes. but it's not dangerous. It's not dangerous. There's no danger in catching a flight, which I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. There's radiation involved in that. Did you know that? Uh, well, I didn't think it. Okay. Now I'm considering whether my next flight should be. That you'll stay on the air. And yes. You know, and then as well as when you go and get dental examinations and chest x-rays and all of those things. You know, they've even done studies that show that somebody could stand outside of a nuclear facility every single day mm. and still get less radiation than somebody who works there, you know, inside an entire year. So I do believe there are a lot of misconceptions, but I don't want to just say that they're the people of Ghana or people on the continent. So that's the question I was coming to ask you. In Europe, that's in Europe. In the U.S., do people have similar misconceptions? Absolutely, there are people who believe that. You might recall there was a cartoon called The Simpsons mm -hmm. that portrayed nuclear as this green oozing gum. Yeah out of a big tin uh, canister. Yeah. You know, they're, they're in Finland, for instance, they purposely store their most prized art in the facility where they have their waste management. Oh, I see. Just to demonstrate that there is no harm. Mm -hmm. um, and if they have the most valuable pos possessions they have in the country, they're willing to put it right alongside nuclear waste. I'm grateful to you. And uh, hopefully, so when you return more, when we make a decision, I'm sure we'll be talking more about what this corporation is supposed to do and how the people of this republic will clearly come to appreciate the impact of nuclear on their lives. More beyond the banana part. Well, I appreciate your time, and I want to make sure to appreciate the Ministry of Environment, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Energy, um, and the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission who have graciously taken time to sit with me and have these conversations. And you're right, I will absolutely be back multiple times. Um, and maybe we'll invite you to an event we're doing in late October so that you can see the breadth of the U.S. contingency, mm -hmm. the government, mm -hmm. academia, laboratory, and industry who will join us here in this great country at the end of October. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Well, folks, that's it.